Hotel School Plus, the version that ACBL has. We're going to add a menu item and we're going to go ahead and create a, an ACBL School game file from ACBL School Plus. So this terminal here is logged on to uh, HammondTest.com. What we're going to do is run this setup script. So we're going to create a new directory called User Interface 13008. We're going to copy everything from the DVD or the that was given. Sorry, not the DVD, but the the files that were delivered on Thursday, July the 16th. We're going to copy those into a new directory, and we are going to set that up. So these two tabs are both logged in. So we run this setup script. The next thing that it's going that we're going to do is we're going to run the script that's going to make the various changes. And this is what the script is going to do. So that's copied the files. What we'll do now is go into this directory. We will start ACBL score plus on a new port number 10308 and that will take a couple of seconds to get started because we copied a previous working directory we have all of the database files from when this test was done in, in ACBL. So this page will come up with a Horn Lake Regional Tournament that we created on that day. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be adding a command line, sorry not a command line, a menu item to be able to edit, uh, to be able to create a game file from a, an ACBL School Plus section. So these are the files that we had. I'm going to look at the Wednesday afternoon KO. And this is the submenu item. We're going to add a menu item here to be able to create an ACBL score game file. So the first thing we do is to edit the config slash write routes file and we want to be in the team section area and what we're going to do is we're going to add these three lines. What this does is every time we have a URL which is team sections slash team section number followed by create game file we're telling this routes file that those are valid actions. You can see how that the status is up here. So we're going to add these three new ones. The next thing we're going to do is to change the menu, the sub menu that gets displayed. So currently it displays get matches ACBL score XML. We are going to add one line which is going to be to create the game file and we pass in the routes that we created earlier. So create game file, team sections path, and we pass in the team section that we want to work on. So that's going to add it to the submenu. Next thing we're going to do is to add something into the controller for this team section. So it's got some default actions. And we're going to just create two empty Two empty methods and what they will do they will do nothing but then they will go off to the view to display something so that's defining the method in the controller this is going to be the actual view that gets displayed and what it will do is it's going to display the menu items then these are various calculations we're going to say that the file name is going to be 21.ACA as a default. This is for ACBL score 
7.90. If it's a KO event, we display the message write all brackets. If it's another type of event, we just say write all sections. This next line is fairly typical for a Rails application. If there are any errors, you want to display them. And then this also very similar. If there are any messages that you want to display, you display them. Then a description in HTML of what we're going to do. So we're going to create a game file. Then we have a simple form, which the user will select. And we're asking for the file name, the version number, and whether we should select, whether we should write all the sections or just an individual one. So we save that file and this is what the action view is going to look like again very similar we say are there any errors to display if they are display them are there any messages that should be displayed and if not we just display the the link to download the file now we've added some virtual attributes to the team section class same thing is going to apply for both team section and also for the pair section. So we add them to the base section. We need to add these uh, virtual attributes. So those are the six virtual attributes that we added to be able to support game files. So I'm now going to uh, reload that page. And what will happen... It's going to take a little while because what it has to do now, this is modifying a running system. It has to go reread all the files that change and update the internal workings of ACBL score, or actually the Rails server. So for team section number two in the database, it's going to display the status. And what we'll look at now, the submenu will have changed, and we've got one additional menu item, and that is to be able to create the game file. When we select it, it goes through the routes.rb, calls the controller. The controller, even though we put nothing in it, by default, the next thing it's going to do is to call the view, and we created the view for create game file. So it's now going to display the view that we had created earlier. Fairly common user interface here. We put the same buttons at the top and the bottom in case the user is scrolling. We ask for a file name. We ask for a ACBL version number. Now if you look at the text that's displayed here, by default it's going to display the name of the uh, variable, which was v VA for virtual attribute game file name. Well, we don't want that displayed to the user, so what we're going to do now is we're going to modify the YAML file, which has got the mapping between the variable names and what gets displayed on the user. So we want to change these three attributes from being VA game file name to actually be the game file. So we save that. We cause go back into this screen again. And this is just showing how quickly you can change things. You see that the, the correct values are now displayed. Now this is the team section controller and what we had right now is an empty controller. We're not actually doing anything for the action. So what we'll do now is to add what a typical action would be. What we want to do is to get the parameters from the team section. These are the virtual attributes, the file name, the version, and whether we're setting all the sections. We want to be able to go ahead and create the XML, uh, and then based on the section, we create a subdirectory. We work out what the name is going to be. And this is new code that we need to add inside the game file imported to be able to run gfprint. So we will just go ahead and add that code. So this is the game file imported to be able to create the game file from XML. We just make it a call to a 
something that's going to be protected inside here. And it's going to look something like this. So to be able to convert the game file in and out. So that would then go ahead and create the game file. So we've, this is how easy it is to add the menu item. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to manually run what this script would be doing. We'll go ahead and do it on a pair game. So this is a pair game that we'd created earlier. This is pair section number one. What we're going to do this time is just generate the XML. So this is having ACBL score generate the AC, sorry, it's having ACBL score plus generate the ACBL score XML file. And we now it's created this uh, exports this file in the exports directory. So we're going to go into the public exports directory. We have that one file that was created, fairly big file. And what we're going to do now is to run GF print manually. This is the code that would be in the controller. So we want this is the input file. We want to be able to write the output file. And I'm going to call this 16afternoon.aca. So using GF print, it's read the XML, it's created this file called 16af.aca. Because I'm actually in this exports directory, what I can do is give it the URL and it automatically downloads it. So it's downloaded this file 16af.aca from the remote system onto my local computer here. I now have a different tab over here and what this what I'm going to do now is to copy this from my downloads folder into a folder that I share between my Apple Windows environment and my Windows environment. So downloaded the file, copied it, and I'm now going to copy this file into my game file folder, which is running a Windows XP system. So I've got this 16 after ACA. We go back to this, um, we see these are the names that we typed in when we were looking at everything. And we'll go look at a, a, sample, um, a sample board number, board number three. Let's just pull up the up the names in another tab whilst it's doing that. So I've got this game file 16 after ACA. I will go ahead F2. I will open that game file. So this is the game file that we created and let's just look at the um, the names that we had. So there are the names showing up in ACBL score and here are the names that we have in ACBL score plus and we see that the names match. What we'll do now is go look at a score. We'll just look at board number three and then we had board number three on this tab here. So we're seeing that the the, the information has been copied over correctly. So what we've done is added a menu item to ACBL score plus, and then we've shown that we can go from the ACBL score plus, we can generate XML, we can use GF print to be able to import, to convert from that XML file into a game file, copy the game file onto a Windows system, and read the game file on uh, ACBL score.